Underwater welding is a crucial occupation worldwide. When structures like well platforms, underwater pipelines, dams, or ships require repairs, a dedicated team of professionals is summoned for this important duty. This job can be extremely perilous. So, what does a typical day look like for an underwater welder? It varies based on the location of the job. Inland underwater welders begin their day like anyone else. They wake up, prepare for the day, and travel to their job site, which might be a lake, river, or dam. Their usual activities include salvage operations and the upkeep and repair of structures like docks. After completing their eight-hour shift, they head home. However, for those working offshore, the routine is quite different. They often spend several months at sea, stationed at oil rigs, or on large ships. Their work is critical, and they typically endure long working hours. These offshore welders may clock up to 80 hours a week, but fatigue is just one of their minor worries. Upon diving to depths up to 1,300 feet, underwater welders face significant risks. The possibility of not returning to the surface is real. Diving dangers such as decompression illness, hypothermia, and drowning are not even the most life-threatening aspects of their job. Indeed, drowning. No amount of training can completely eliminate the ever-present danger of drowning due to what's called delta P or differential pressure dangers. This occurs when two different water levels meet, creating a significant pressure difference and immense forces, sometimes hundreds of pounds per square inch. If the passageway between high and low pressure areas is narrow, a diver can be caught in the current and potentially drown. Welding underwater at temperatures above 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit height splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. An explosive mixture can form if the balance of these gases shifts too far. Even small explosions under these conditions can be deadly because of the water's density and the risk from shock waves. To avoid electrocution risks, underwater welders have developed a technique called dry welding. This involves welding inside a sealed chamber under increased pressure, which allows for higher quality work. In this method, called dry hyperbaric welding, the process takes place inside a chamber filled with a gas mixture and completely sealed off from the surrounding water. These chambers are designed to let welders operate in a dry, controlled environment. Air is continuously cycled through the chamber with a mix of gases like helium and oxygen. This setup maintains a high internal pressure to help prevent decompression sickness. Although effective, setting up hyperbaric chambers is time-consuming, costly, and they are usually not reusable. Thus, for urgent repairs, welders must sometimes revert to wet welding. Wet welding involves using double insulated cables and direct current. The electrodes used are coated with a thick substance called flux. As the electrode is consumed, it generates a protective gas bubble over the welding arc. As they progress, welders deposit a layer of molten metal known as slag along the seam. This slag shields the seam, allowing the weld to cool correctly. Underwater welding demands not only high skill, but also tremendous courage. Until robots Robots can match the precision and efficiency of human welders. These brave individuals will remain indispensable in preserving our modern infrastructure.